Hello and uh, welcome back to the channel, thanks for stopping by. Uh, we've got a slightly different video today, or it's actually the first type of um, this sort of video I've ever recorded, so you know, I'm trying a few bits and pieces, um, so let me know what you think of it in the comments. Um, but yeah, let's, let's get right into it. So what we're doing today, we are comparing my Gibson Les Paul Standard uh, 2009 with this Gibson Les Paul Studio from 2008. Um, this one is, is mine and one that you may have seen on the channel before. This one is my guitarist and my friend. Uh, he doesn't know I'm making this video yet. He'll probably find out as I uh, as I upload it. But what we're going to do is just going to deep dive very quickly into the two of these guitars. I'll go through the specs. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll do some um, sort of sound tests, let you hear them in isolation bit by bit. Um, just in case you're wondering what the differences are, or if you were maybe looking at buying one of these, uh, whether the standard or the studio, maybe I can help answer some questions on which one you may prefer. But uh, without further ado, uh, let's jump into the two of these in the context of a full band mix. <laughs> Right guys, so now that we've heard the uh, guitars in the context of a full band mix, let's just go into uh, the specs of each of the guitars. I'll make this as quick as painless as possible. I know it's not the most interesting, but it may help affect your um, decisions and what you're going to get. You know, you can, um, I'll list the differences between a standard and a studio model. So we'll start with my standard, uh, purely because I know this guitar a little better. So it's 2009. Gibson Les Paul standard, obviously the gold top, which is wearing quite nicely. Try and get some B-roll footage of that. Um, but this is a great guitar. I've had it since 2017 and it's been all over the country with me. It's done loads of gigs. Um, I got it pretty much spank because you wouldn't have really known that it wasn't a brand new guitar. And I have just slowly but surely just destroyed this thing. Bless it. Um, but it's a great guitar. So let's just get into it. So uh, it's all stock currently, however, video coming soon on some changes that I will be making. So uh, the pickups, they are your uh, Burst Buckers. Um, they're not the Burst Bucker Pros, they're just the standard Burst Bucker, PAF style pickups. Then you've got mahogany body, um, mahogany neck, and then the rosewood fingerboard. And of course on your standard, you do get the binding um, on a Les Paul in comparison to a studio, which you don't. Um, now, this was part of the run, I say I'll try and get a better bit of that, where you've got the PCB electronics in there, uh, and that included the locking Nutric um, input jack. Um, so these are all the bits and pieces that will actually be going shortly. Um, I, look, I just wanna say, you know, um, I've used this guitar, I say it's gigged in outside, it's gigged inside, cold, hot, festivals, sweaty pubs, sweaty, you know, it has done every kind of gig bar Glastonbury that you can think of. And this stuff has never let me down. But I know that one day there will be an issue in here somewhere. And trying to source one of these PCB boards now is, is now an impossible unless you want to pay um, stupid prices, which I don't. So I uh, say so there will be a video shortly of some upgrades that will be happening to this guitar. Um, and then finally, just to say, it did have, or it does have the locking Grover tuning pegs, um, and these are solid, these are great, they're going nowhere, um, 
you know, a, a lot of guitar, you know, there's that whole thing of the Gibson G string struggling to stay in tune. Um, occasionally I'll have an issue like that with this one, but touch wood, this has been a, a solid guitar. It holds its tuning fantastically and it's just an all round great guitar. Um, so yeah, we'll move on to the studio now. Um, and then after that, we'll look at going into the isolated tracks. Okay, so let's just take a really quick look at um, the studio. So as I said earlier, it is a 2008 Gibson Les Paul Studio. Um, actually a really great guitar. It's just had a setup. Um, I took it in before and I picked it up after, and it's a completely different guitar. Um, I don't think my friend will mind me saying I did not like this guitar to play before I took it in. Um, it was just so... Um, on the other scale side of the spectrum compared to my Les Paul standard, I just did not enjoy playing this guitar. However, actually it's a dream to play now. Um, so it just shows it just needed a bit of a setup. And it's not to my specs, it is to my friends. Uh, we do have a very similar um, lichen to how we like our guitars set up. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, an utter, it's an utter dream to play now and it sounds great. So let's get into the specs. So uh, it's a mahogany body with a maple cap unbound uh, and then we go into the fretboard which is a mahogany neck and then a um, ebony fingerboard uh, you know what the pre-2010 studios were known for uh, and actually why they're quite sought after now um, in the second hand market you know it really is a great guitar your pickups are your 490R uh, in the brier in the neck and your 498T in the bridge um, slightly hotter pickups and they sound great. Uh, and then the tuners, they're your standard Gibson Deluxe Cluson. Um, they, they, they seem great, seem solid. Um, I know my friend did have some tuning issues with the G-string. I uh, may have mentioned those earlier on my Les Paul standard. Um, I've been playing this since I picked this up a couple of days ago. And, and it's solid. Um, you know... The bend, the bend, uh, the G string is great now. Um, so if it keeps going out of tune, then that's player error. Sorry, Josh. Um, but yeah, it's a great guitar. So it's two thousand and eight. So like my gold top, it's seen some action. Um, the white is starting to to yellow. Some nicks, bumps. Um, we picked this up, or he picked it up second hand recently. So looks like actually this may have been refilled at some point or refinished because there's a couple of knocks but you cannot feel them so i can only assume they were re revarnished actually uh but maybe not um but yeah it's a great guitar uh everything is stock minus this which is a switchcraft uh replacement um pickup selector switch and i only know that because again that's only just been done and, and i took it in to to get done um but yeah to sum up it's it's a great guitar um, uh, and and you know it's it's up to you now to, to to make the decision. Is this enough of a workhorse guitar, or do you want to spend that little bit extra on the the Les Paul standard, um, which ranges depending on age. You know the this I've seen one up for fourteen hundred. Um, you're not far off getting a standard for that. Um, but of course you're not going to get a two thousand and eight standard for for less than sort of eighteen nineteen hundred now, unless you get mine, which is not for sale, but it is beaten um, to to hell and back again. But yeah, great guitar. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to jump over. We're going to listen to each guitar in isolation. So we'll go through the neck, the middle, and the bridge pickup positions, um, just so you can hear them, um, you know, one by one. So yeah. That's enough of me jabbering. Let's get on and let's uh, listen to some of the uh, some of the tones. So very quickly, I just wanted to uh, talk about the amp and signal path that we're following today. So the guitars are going direct in um, to the amp. We're not going through any pedals or compressors or even a tuner. Uh, that's all being done in the door, just to keep it as um, you know as much about the guitar and the amp as physically possible. So today we're going into uh, this. This is my Marshall SV20. H, um, so it's the it's the uh, you know the Monday reissue of the SL uh, nineteen fifty nine I believe. Um, it's the studio, so it's only twenty watts. Uh, we're running it at full power, but uh, I do uh, you know. Unfortunately, I'm not in a studio. I'm just in my house. So what we're doing there is we're actually running it into um, 
one of the Captor X units, uh, and then that's taking a direct feed um, to uh, Focusrite Scarlet uh, into Logic. Um, the only post processing I've done is just take a little bit of the low end flub out, you know, the stuff that we wouldn't want to hear as a guitarist anyway. Other than that, there's no compression, there's no distortion. I might add a little bit of delay or reverb to the solo tracks just to make them sound a little more. But that is it. There, there's no extra pedals, there's no extra because I really wanted the um, the guitars to to shine. Uh, in terms of the settings for the amp, I set it uh, everything at noon for your rhythm tracks, and then for the solo or the lead tracks for both guitars, uh, I dropped a little bit the bass off, and then I just pushed the amp um, a little bit more just for a little extra gain, a little extra compression and a little more sustain. Um, but both of the guitars had exactly the same settings, uh, both in the door and on the amp and on the Captor X. So any nuances or differences you hear, uh, that will come down to the fact that the guitars are different, you know, different pickups, different um, constitutions, everything like that. So again, hopefully this just highlights any differences between the two, uh, whether one is more uh, bang for your buck or whether it's worth going the extra mile financially it doesn't matter it's just whatever you think sounds best but yeah go and try some out find one that feels good sounds good plays well and um yeah i just hope that you uh, enjoy it so let's get into the tracks <laughs> Thank you. 
Very quickly, um, just to wrap up, recap of the video, my thoughts. I don't really think I should be saying too much about these two guitars. Um, personally, I prefer my standard, but that's the reason that that is my Les Paul. I played so many guitars whilst I was looking for my gold top. Um, you know, I'm talking tens. Um, I just went around and I played every Les Paul that I could find. And this was the one that I just went that's it. Um, it wasn't just a walk into a shop and walk out with a guitar. This was a, a real slog to find this one. Um, and so, yes, it's, it's mine. It's what I'm familiar with. It's home. This will never go. However, uh, this Les Paul studio is an utterly incredible guitar. And um, if I was looking for my first Les Paul, and this is the one that I came across, and I didn't have any preconceptions whether I wanted X, Y, or Z, this would certainly be a contender for something that I would walk home with. It's it's a great guitar. Um, I feel like it had a little more bite to it than mine, whereas my standard, I think, was a little more rounded um, in terms of a sound. Playability for both. Uh, they're fantastic guitars. The necks are slightly different. Again, I prefer my standard, but the studio, that's, that's a fantastic neck. Uh, quick, uh, and it being unbound, you know, I found that actually a little easier to play but I like a little bit of fight from my guitars. So um, that's about it though. I'm not going to chew your, chew your ear off forever because, you know, this is purely a, um, very much, this is what I like in guitars, not anything more than that. So thank you very much. Drop a like. Uh, let me know if you preferred one or the other. Um, but thank you very much for, for sticking around um, and I'll catch you in the next one.